Delighted to see the United Kingdom Australia Space Bridge as a first of a kind partnership strategically and operationally between the UK and Australia and it's aimed at catalyzing not just space science partnerships but also platforms for the development of new technologies for the betterment of life here on Earth using space capabilities and of course our understanding of an exploration of the universe. I mean, for the Space Bridge itself, it builds on a long tradition of, of partnerships between the UK and Australia. I'm old enough to remember when the premier astronomical facility in Australia, the Anglo-Australian Telescope in Siding Spring, was established in the early 70s, sort of giving away my age there. But, but for me, as a child, seeing the groundbreaking science that was coming out of this facility, Knowing that we've always had partnerships in astronomy between the UK and Australia, the Space Bridge is, is the next step. And what's really exciting this year is that through a United Kingdom fund called the uh, International Bilateral Fund, uh, which has got more than £20 million dedicated to exploring and building on capabilities in space through international partnerships, I'm delighted that more than a third of the successful recipients of the first round of funding were from institutions in the United Kingdom working with their Australian counterparts and crucially not just working government institution to government institution or university to university but also bringing on board established and what we call New Space Australian companies because really if we want to progress with world-class science and world-class capabilities we've got to tap into new disruptive and emerging technologies that are there and increasingly are being championed by what we call these new space companies. Very small, very agile, often more risk-taking than the established companies. And so when we look at the portfolio of projects that have been funded from Australia, I'm delighted that we've seen a full swathe of academic institutions and also a full swathe of space companies from the small to the large, from the strongly, firmly established to the new space, new kids on the block. Yeah, it's really interesting because very often when people are thinking of space, they're thinking of just astronomy or they're thinking of, of astronauts. But, but to me, space has actually got three categories. You know, the first one is looking out there, astronomy, and I've, I've already mentioned about that long tradition of astronomical collaboration. The second part is, is going out there. So this is exploration, not just with our robotic systems, but with our human tendered systems as well. And of course, Australia has had a long tradition of human spaceflight. We had, we had Paul Scully Power flying in, I think in 1984, as an oceanographer. In the late 1990s, we had Andy Thomas being selected as an astronaut who, who was critical in, in, in the early stages of the International Space Station. And of course, most recently, we've had Catherine uh, Burnell Pegg selected as the first Australian space agency astronaut currently in training with the European Space Agency. So that's, that's great, and we're seeing collaborations in those fields. But the side of space activity that's often overlooked is the satellites whose primary focus isn't looking out there, but it's looking back here. This is space for the benefit of life on Earth. It's absolutely crucial. And when we're looking at the projects that have been funded through the IBF fund, we're seeing a real focus on exploration technologies, but also on space for the benefit of life here on Earth. So this story comes in, in two parts, one ancient, and one modern. I think a lot of people overlook that the oldest continuous astronomical tradition and culture in the world is in Australia. Tens of thousands of years ago, when First Nations and Torres Strait Islanders came to Australia, the reason they were able to cover the entire continent was through a deep understanding of the sky and the way to navigate. And what I find amazing is when you look at the, the First Nations mythologies of what they saw in the night sky, with this beautiful view in the Southern Hemisphere, looking towards the heart of the galaxy, they're truly awe-inspiring, but wind forward tens of thousands of years, and I want to introduce this. This is a meteorite that fell in Northwest Africa, but it's actually a piece of the planet Mars. And we know that because since 1976, we've had robotic spacecraft on the surface of Mars, measuring the chemical composition, measuring atmospheric constituents, etc. And by comparing those results to this rock, we know that this was blasted off the surface of Mars tens of thousands of years ago, probably millions of years ago. Now, that's all inspiring to me. But if I am trying to understand whether or not life ever started on Mars, or whether or not there's still life on Mars, this sample is pretty useless because it's been lying in a desert for thousands of years and it's got contaminated. But right now, 
there is a NASA rover called Perseverance. And it's trundling over the surface of a part of Mars, Jezero Crater. And part of its job is to cache dozens of rock samples in pristine, isolated tubes. And they're going to be brought back to the Earth for analysis at the end of this decade. If we're ever going to understand whether or not life existed on Mars, it's because of these Perseverance samples. And I'm delighted that the first ever female principal investigator for any Mars mission was actually an Australian. It's Dr. Abigail Allwood. She's a PI for the Perseverance mission. And to me, this closes the circle of tens of thousands of years of Australian science, going back from ancient traditions to modern cutting edge technologies. And in conclusion, you know, from the United Kingdom perspective, we are absolutely delighted to be partnering with Australia, not just on exploration science, not just on astronomy, but also for that crucial element, using space technologies and capabilities from space to safeguard life here on Earth.